Okay, Rob McKillop here uh, on the MuseScore website. Uh, .org, they have a .com version, uh, which uh, will sell you various wonderful things, which I don't need right now. So uh, go to the .org site. It's much simpler. You get a free download. Or, as I did, download MuseScore without MuseHub. MuseHub is a wonderful thing, but uh, it's way too complicated for me. You get all this stuff. I just want it simple. So that's what you click without MuseHub. And uh, I'll close this because I've already done it. And uh, I'm going to go into my uh, launch pad. And here we have MuseScore 4. We'll click on that. And this is what you, you brought to the scores page where you can create a new score. So let's do that. But before, have a look at this learn. You can you've got lots of videos where you can learn how to do things, some basics, setting up your first score and so on. Anyway, here we go new score. New score. All right. So I'll click on that. And uh, it says choose an instrument. So I'm going to write loot in here. I know it says loot tablature. We could do loot with a treble clef or bass clef, whatever, but I'm just going to go tab. I click on that, and this arrow lights up, and you click it, and you bring the loot tab into this area, which is your score. Ignore this bit. Uh, I could click done, but I'm going to go next just to show you. If I was doing a treble clef, I could change the key here. I can still choose a time signature, you know, it could be 5-4 if I'm, you know, playful. Um, I'm going to go for this. Uh, I'll just click here to say the tempo for playing back. You might want to change that, but you can do that within the score. It gives you 32 bars. Uh, you can delete some or add more, so don't worry about that. Title, I'm going to write here title so that when we see it on screen, we get an idea of what is where. Subtitle. Uh, lyricist or arranger. Sometimes I write arranged by. And a copyright, the name of your business. Well, let's just call it Rob Stuff. Um, now I'll click done. And there's a score. And it's got the time signature. Uh, it's got the title, subtitle, composer, and arranger or lyricist. Okay, uh, now it's automatically, it, uh, it brings up a, a six course loot. Uh, but I want to write for 10 course today. So I'm going to right click and go down to stave part properties. This is where all the action happens. I mean, that time signature, I can still get rid of it here by clicking that, but nothing happens. So I, I click Apply, and it disappears. Okay, uh, so I've changed my mind about that. Now, down here is number of strings. It says six. Edit string data. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six notes, uh, six strings. Uh, I can change the tuning of any of these by doing edit string. So the note G2, uh, I could make it A flat 2 or F sharp 2. But I'm just going to cancel that because G is what I want. Um, but I want to add strings. So from G2, ignore C4. From G2, I'm going to go down to F2. And that's the seventh course now. Add a new string. For uh, E2 for the 8th course, D2 for the ninth, and C2 for the 10th course. If I was doing D minor tuning or 13th course, you know, I could um, choose uh, different pitches for all these strings and um, save it at the end. So I'll have a, a file I can call up later. Okay, so I've got that. Uh, I'm going to write apply and OK. Now you can't see any difference because all I've done is added uh, the lower courses, which we're not using yet. Now, how do we input the tablature? Well, normally you need a pencil, don't you? So I'm going to drag this along. And here's the pencil. And we're going to click that. 
and notice that it changes. You get this uh, cursor coming in. You can see a, a note value here. That's the, the rhythm sign or the timing sigla coming up here. You can change it. I'm going to change it to a minimum a half note. And then to input notes, I'm just going to press on my keyboard the letter A. And there it is. And you get the, the timing value of the first string open. I'm going to do a right arrow, which takes me along to the next rhythm uh, bit. And then I'm going to go down to the second string and I'm going to press the letter C. Um, I'm going to go into the next bar and go down to the third string. But before I press the letter C, I want to change the uh, to quarter notes, uh, crotchets and quarter notes here. So I'm going to do the letter D. We'll have a, a little run here. D, right click, C, right click, A, right click, C, right click into the next bar. But here I want to have minims again, half notes. D, right click, I'm going to go down an octave, A, and then into the next bar I'm going to take a whole note for this. And I'm going to go down to the tenth course. So there's a 6th course, 7th, 8th, you see the line appearing, the diagonal line, 9th uh, and 10th. Now I'm going to write letter A, and there it is. I could have written letter B if I wanted to hold that note down, but it would be a bit avant-garde. We're just going to keep it at that. Now I could press escape, or I could go back up and click the pencil, and that will take me out of the writing mode. And just click on the score anywhere. Now, that's my score. I could do a, a right click if I, you know, if I want to change things. For instance, I might want the, the notes on the line, or I might want a completely different font altogether. So right click, part properties. This time we're going to advanced style properties. And down here you get Lacrimé Pavan, isn't that cute? And uh, whatever changes we make, we, they're viewable here. For instance, we're set for letters. We might want numbers. Okay, I want letters. You might want them above the lines or on the lines. Now, if you're on the lines, you might want this broken thing. So if you look at a note C, the line goes straight through it. But if I make it broken, the line is broken either side of the letter. Um, but I want above and continuous. Okay, now maybe I want a different font because this is MuseScore Tab Renaissance. If I click that, I get options. The Sans, oops, um, Serif, Renaissance, Default. Uh, Falaise, um, Divise, because I can't pronounce it, Bonoi, <laughs> Divise. Now, what's the letter E when I change to Gautier? Yeah, very different. I really like that for French Baroque. Um, uh, we could just about get away with the, the ten course repertoire, early French Baroque. Um, there's Dowland. And uh, there's something called didactic, which, you know, is easy to read, but uh, I find it a bit boring. I'm going to go for Gautier. Okay, that's the, the tab, but what about the signals above the time values, note values here? Um, we have options. We can have modern. See it change. Uh, we could have Italian. French, uh, Baroque headless, as many people were in the Baroque era um, in France. <laughs> Can't believe I said that. There we go, French Baroque, different way of doing that. So I'm going to go for the headless. Um, okay, now. What else have we got? Repeat. Oh yeah, see this note here hasn't got a time value above it because it's the same as this one. And this, these notes don't either. They're carried on from here. We might not want that. 
you might want to always have a value for each note or as I do at the new bar I quite like it that way because my memory going from here to here you know I might forget who I am or what I'm playing so that helps um, there's this odd thing when you have a dot in a rhythm sign if I click through stave uh, no, where is it? Below. It's not working. Uh, where am I? Uh, okay, well, let's ignore that because I don't know what I'm talking about all of a sudden. But uh, something. sometimes you get it and all the dots appear next to the, the chord. I don't like that because sometimes we use that for strumming signs and so on. So, uh, doing without. Okay, I'm going to press OK now. I've got everything I want. And then apply and close. And uh, so here we have, um, we got the, the new rhythm font, we got the new tab font. And uh, it's wonderful. And uh, I will fill all this in with the title and my name and so on. Then I might want to, well, save it. So I'm going to save this save and call it well we're going to you got a choice to the cloud or to your computer i'm going to go to my computer um, and then i can call it uh, test thing okay test thing and save it i've already created a folder called loot uh, save now, if I want to make a PDF or indeed publish it so the rest of the world can play this amazing opus number, uh, well, you click publish up here and you get published to musescore.com. I mentioned .com earlier. One of the things you can do is upload your scores and uh, even sell them to people from that site. And then there's export. We click export. PDF comes up automatically, but I'll show you the others. You can export the sound file, which is sometimes quite useful, I've found. Um, okay, PDF file. Oh, also uh, Braille, which is very important. Uh, there we go. Uh, PDF export, and it goes to the same uh, folder as before. So I'm going to save this now. And there it is in my filing system. Okay, that's it. Um, any questions, don't ask me at all. I have no idea. I just, this is all I can do. And it works fine and I can write nice scores. But the, the complex things, you can go to a, a support group online and uh, talk to them. Okay, cheers.